Russian ballet. Russian ballet is recognized all over the world. The names of Maya Plisetskaya, Igor Maseev, Olga Lepishenskaya, Asif Mesera, Yekaterina Maximova, Vladimir Vasilev, Natalia Besmertnova, and Mikhail Lavrovsky, Vladimir Malachov, Nikolai Tsiskaridzi, and Natalia Osipova are all well known to every educated person. All of them graduated from the Moscow State Academy of Choreography, one of the world's best ballet schools, the Russian School of Classical Dance. Today's generation is represented by our children and graduates, and we have a very different attitude to them. We used to admire actors, and today, these are our children and our students to be proud of. Of course, the profession is unique, both in terms of complexity and patience. Our school is judged by its achievements, and the academy always has a priority. The Academy is one of Russia's oldest theatre schools. It dates back to the year 1773. Dancing classes for orphans at the Moscow Foundling House came into being by decree of Empress Catherine II. Academician Prince Ivan Pyatskoy, an outstanding public figure of the Age of Enlightenment, was the main trustee of the Foundling Hospital. The building housing dancing classes still exists today. Its side wing is decorated with a blazon featuring a pelican that tears apart its chest with a nib. Legend has it, the bird feeds chicks on its own blood to keep them alive. The academy is alike. Over its 240-year history, it has been selfishly feeding its own chicks. On the one hand, much has changed, and on the other, not very much. Back then, about 20 girls and 20 boys were selected for studies. The age of students and subjects taught saw little change. Of course, nowadays, the level of ballet dancers' training has increased dramatically, and technique gained significant progress. But overall, retrospectively, we've preserved our traditions very well. Europe's best teachers were invited to Moscow soon after the first dancing classes made an appearance. By the end of the 18th century, Europe had long recognized ballet as a form of art. The first teachers were invited from Italy. In fact, it was dancing master Beccari who founded and brought us the Italian technique. French masters Lefebvre and Goulansor came afterwards. Upon learning foreign techniques and adopting them, the Russians shaped a remarkable classical dance technique, all of its own, and proved very capable and talented ballet performers. By the 19th century, ballet had won a privileged position among other kinds of Russia's theatrical art. The Moscow Ballet School graduates performing on its stage were always in the limelight of the main theatre publications of that time. In the early 20th century, even fastidious metropolitan critics noted that the Moscow Ballet performance level was outstanding. In my opinion, Russian schools' sincerity of emotion, great soulfulness, and a deep breath of art are second to none. The history of the Moscow Ballet School has close ties with Russia's destiny. Even in the most turbulent times, the state and teachers made their best to preserve it. During Napoleon's invasion, the Civil War, and the Great Patriotic War, training kept going. In 1941, the facility was evacuated to the Volga River region. Despite total devastation, hunger and poor living conditions, training continued. 
150 children, together with ballet masters, were sent to the Volga River region. Houses were rented, bars were made, and rooms for secondary school classes were furnished. On September the 1st, lessons began, in spite of everything. An outstanding artist and teacher, Nikolai Tarasov, was appointed head of the school during this turbulent period. And shortly after the war, it was due to Tarasov's efforts that the entire world discovered Russian ballet. We have the Bible and Talmud to rely upon. It's a reference book for every teacher. Artistry of Soviet performers came as a real shock to the West. From the early 1950s, Moscow Ballet School students would consistently participate in prestigious festivals and international competitions and would always win the highest awards. Who won gold medals during the first competitions? Muscovites Nina Sarikina and Yuri Vladimirov did. They were awarded the first star in Paris. Our graduates won the first Grand Prix in Paris. Historical facts prove that our eminent graduates made the history of our school and our theatre. They proved that we are the best in the world. The Academy's history includes many spectacular masters, including Leonid Zhdanov, Igor Uksusnikov, Lyudmila Litavkina, Pyotr Pyastov, Alexander Bandarenka, and Leonid Lavrovsky, whose creative work made a special contribution to the development of the Moscow Ballet School. For over 40 years, the school has been chaired by Sofia Golovkina. Later, the school received the status of academy. It was Golovkina who raised the whole constellation of brilliant dancers to become the pride of the Russian ballet. Among those dancers were Nina Sorokina, Natalia Besmertnova, Galina Stepanenka, and Maria Alexandrova. Today's principal of the academy, Marina Leonova, was also among them. People's artist of Russia, a professor, and a disciple of great ballet masters and choreographers of our time, Marina Leonova has been running the academy for over a decade. She's a specialist recognized by the world ballet community. Many of her graduates became genuine primas and laureates of international ballet competitions. With no exaggeration, her life and the academy's fate became one. Every day of her life is dedicated to ballet. I attend classes. Watching our children training is interesting. Well, I take part in all of our exams, from entries to finals. I am present at all examinations, and I know each child both by name and surname. The entry exams mark the start for these children. Ten-year-old applicants' eyes reflect excitement and interest in the unknown. There are ten kids competing for each place. I dream of performing at the Bolshoi Theatre, or at the least at the Grand Opera. My dream is to become a famous choreographer. Well, I'm sure I'll be admitted. My grandmother wants me to be like Maya Plisetska. They say if you're not afraid of performing, it's high time to leave ballet. While the entrance exams are underway, Artur Mikrchan is preparing for his finals. The Bolshoi Theatre sent him a joining invitation recently. He has been dreaming of performing on Russia's main theatrical stage for his entire tutorial. But before that, he was obsessed with another idea. To enter the academy, I would train for two hours until I felt exhausted. Studying here was my obsession. Today is the third round of entrance examinations. Apparently, fastidious teachers are carefully checking the physical fitness of the little applicants. 
the kids seem to be twisted into all sorts of possible ways. In fact, the teachers are estimating such ballet qualities as footstep, turnout, lifting, flexibility and jumping. And the teacher's strictness isn't real. They're excited just as much as the children. Anything might happen during examinations. Denis Snizhen arrived in Moscow from Irkutsk. His grandmother taught him ballet, and she choreographed his dance for the entrance exams. But facing the teachers, Denis is not able to master his emotions. Overexcited, he forgets some movements. Take a little rest. Unfortunately, children who come to us are the pig in a poke, a lottery, naturally. Every teacher tries to squeeze the most out of every child, helps develop their technique, discover certain talents, which are needed for the art of ballet. A teacher's task is to find the best musical direction, varying from classical ballet to folk and stage dancing. Ballet needs different artists. The examiner's task is to help children master their emotions. A person who's going for ballet should always be able to do it. Managing emotions is just one item on the list of requirements for all ballet dancers. Abstaining from one's desires is a must for a ballet dancer. You always want to eat, have a rest, go to the disco or restaurant. All these must be abandoned, except for rare occasions. A ballet dancer's life is a daily hard slog, from morning until night, from morning until night. Today, the Moscow Academy of Choreography is a real ballet city in the center of Moscow. It houses 20 dance halls, a 400 spectator training theater, a school, piano classes and boarding facilities for non-residents. The academy has a private clinic and a unique library containing books from the 18th century. No country in the world can boast of such a major ballet school. One way or another, the Moscow Academy project is replicated by leading choreographic centers. All choreographic schools in the world are built based on the project. The Paris Covent Garden has exactly the same phenomenal edifice of architecture. Imagining a more convenient school is impossible. It's all for the kids. Our theatre is an exact replica of the Marinsky Theatre. The school's stage is a bit smaller than the one at the Bolshoi, but the Marinsky has the same stage. If theatre begins with a hangar, ballet starts with a classical dance to mainly focus on. No stamping. Imagine you've just prickled. Easy, easy movement. And mind showing the body over your back. Each morning starts with several hours of classics. During a workout, young dancers bear tremendous loads, giving birth to light and gracious movement. No gym can be compared to this exercise. The tough school of classical dance provides for ideal posture, concentration and the ability to behave in any environment. With the head and one. No sitting. Hands here in front of you. It's a paradox that, given a limited set of movements, dance gives rise to eternal varieties and combinations. That's the magic of ballet. Upon mastering a classical dance technique, a performer is able to get into any dance field. Classical ballet is our art. It requires strong external, technical and spiritual unity and perfection. If it does happen, it's really amazing. 
To think that the Academy teaches exclusively classical dance is a mistake. After eight years of studies, students learn the best dance techniques and trends. The curriculum includes historical and folk dance, popular stage dance, modern dance, duet dance and finally, acting. Ballet is constantly moving forward. Unlike mechanical dance, genuine role-playing reflects the essence of a role. A biography of a man is played and generally portrays the time and the era in which the action happens. Here, precisely historical folk dance is needed. World-leading choreographers help their students to keep abreast of things. David Kampas is giving a master class in the studio as the St. Petersburg Mikhailovsky Theatre artistic director is performing on the stage. Nacho Duato has especially arrived in Moscow to put on the Lamoroso Ballet in association with the Academy's graduates. The ballet was staged at the Paris Opera. Many Russian theatres dream of enriching their repertoire with this performance. But so far, only the Academy's young talents have been able to take advantage of the opportunity. Staying open-minded to new techniques, enriching and diversifying your movement is of great significance. Working with other choreographers to master new ways of dance expression is vital. Duato has a special sliding style. Few professional dancers are capable of imitating it instantly. However, the performance by the Moscow Academy dancers does meet Duato's expectations. Russia's ballet school is, without exaggeration, one of the best in the world. The students display a very good level of classical ballet. I'm trying to teach them different ways of feeling and expressing their movements while dancing. Inside the academy, the first thing you notice is the students' manners. Politeness is natural to students. The academy's disciples are distinguished from their peers by impeccable appearance, tact and respectful courtesy. From the very first days, the academy has treated the issue of education very seriously. The still vibrant traditions have been cherished for many years. Some parents bring their children here to forget, as if the school were a storage room. Family is of great importance. That's why we want parents getting involved in the educational process. The Academy is proud of its teachers. Everyone boasts a wealth of stage experience. Still, finding a future star is extremely challenging. We do our best to help children grow very professional. You know, it's not about merely getting acquainted with the profession. It's about mastering the art of ballet. I'm referring to performance perfection and academism. They're supposed to become technically skilled and musical at the same time, expressive and feminine, as the ballet is a gorgeous art. Everyone has equal opportunities in the class, but not even maximum devotion is a guarantee of success. Nature often provides a stumbling block to a career. Oddly enough, nature proves to be cruel. By the fifth class, many dancers, mostly girls, lose their professional form. As you can never challenge nature, some are forced to leave the profession with tears in their eyes. This is another group of children, the ones who will be expelled. Parents dream of their offspring becoming ballet dancers. But parents should think twice before bringing their kids here. If a child doesn't self-fulfill in the art, he'll grow to be a very miserable person. Sometimes, children stop growing. The lack of stamina prevents the development, turnout or footstep. 
One day they realized that they made a wrong choice, and that's very hard. Parents are not always aware of it. Yes, we expel them and we feel for them. But if we don't, their lives would be ruined. No theater would admit them, and that is much worse. These are the most challenging cases, our teachers admit. Convincing parents not to cripple the fate of their children. Meeting kids halfway and taking them from the ballet is the hardest of things. When you devote a child to the arduous toil as a profession, you must realize no pain, no gain. They must realize that a swan with curved legs is terrible. Unfortunately, if that happens, you'll never become a celebrity. You won't get what you expect. Some say that ballet is a female art, but others disagree. They say imagining the stage without men is impossible. The Moscow Ballet saw a rise in male dance in the 19th century. The Moscow School has been recognized for training male dancers for its whole history. Ballet glorifies love. Doing this without graceful ballet dancers and courageous men performers is impossible. Boys learn classical dance separately from the girls. They do their utmost at each lesson. This is the only way to develop proper muscle memory. Otherwise, boys would have nothing to do in the ballet. Take your leg off the bar and hold your back. Well done. Performances by Yuri Grigorovich marked quite a huge breakthrough in male dancing. I think that plays like Spartacus and Ivan the Terrible gave an impetus to the development of male power and classical dance, which played an extremely positive role. Self-control, strength and grace, simplicity, decent and pure simplicity leaves no place for unnaturalness and brings together power and dignity. Teaching boys, we try to instill in them both aesthetics and a sense of self, of their nature, which is vital to my mind. Both ballet men and women have competition. The law is simple. The higher the status of an artist, the more competition to face. The number of roles is limited, and they're always in demand by talented performers. However, studying at the academy has never safeguarded a ballet paradise. Both toil and respectful human relations are of vital significance. We do have friendship. It's a must for me. Some say ballet and friendship are not compatible, which is true if you haven't found a person to 
get support from. I'm lucky to have such a friend. Envy, mistreatment or anything like that are non-existent. We've never had such an experience. That's why my course means a lot to me. Over the course of my career, nobody's put broken glass in my shoes or cut my clothing. While dancing and rehearsing, students support one another very much. If a student dances or performs on stage, others will support behind the curtain. They don't face such rivalry. Only the stage defines the best. The teachers predict a long creative fate for Ksenia Ryshkova. She won gold in the Grigorovich International Competition in Sochi, Grand Prix of the Mikhailovsky Theatre, the gold medal in the International Ballet Competition of Ballet Artists and Choreographers in Moscow, and shortly before graduation from the Academy, she received offers from four major theatres in Moscow and St. Petersburg. I don't think I'll be too upset if they don't take me. But now, I realize that I might have been upset and lost if I hadn't entered the academy. I had fabulous teachers who made me a personality and a genuine ballet dancer. Even despite the offers she's received, Ksenia shows maximum concentration in lessons with Marina Leonova, the academy's principal and her teacher-in-chief. Ksenia calls Leonova her second mother. She has always admired the manner in which she works. The teacher does not impose her own opinion. She helps Ksenia reveal her talent in a natural way. Yet another factor for Ksenia's success is the support from her parents, especially in times when everlasting pa exhausts Ksenia completely. Naturally, my parents feel for me when I'm all in pieces, crying and sobbing. But Dad is very supportive. Well, if you're tired, choose another, ordinary school, he says. Those words really work well, as the choice to work hard was mine. Students train six days a week. Each day they have up to ten lessons. Apart from dance disciplines, the curriculum offers music school and educational subjects, including the history of theatre, ballet, painting and music that contribute to better insight into the profession. Moreover, students receive an excellent secondary education. Particular attention is paid to foreign languages, as well as to physics, chemistry, mathematics and so on. Today's training at the academy is not confined to vocational secondary education received by all Soviet people's artists and winners of Lenin and state awards. High education is provided in several fields, which also includes ballet critics. The academy has its postgraduate school. Everyone who joins the academy at the age of 10 has the chance to obtain a doctoral degree in pedagogical sciences or art history. Going through all the stages of this unique school naturally requires strong stamina. Upon receiving a secondary education, students can also obtain a higher education, a bachelor's degree. Following a three-year bachelor's study, they can proceed to the magistrate and postgraduate study. Traineeship is also available. The academy has a hostel for students. It's called a boarding school. It houses Muscovites who travel long distances, children from other cities, and students from all around the world. Luca Dario Calcente came from Italy. 
This is my box. I painted the Italian flag reading, I love Italy. At the age of three, the boy fell in love with ballet after watching an Italian movie about a young dancer. At 10, it was suggested he go to Moscow. Finding friends became the first great challenge, as Luca spoke not a word of Russian. At first it was difficult as I didn't speak Russian well, just hello and goodbye. Once I felt like going home and leaving the academy. Then I realized that studying at the academy was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I made up my mind to stay. As myth has it, ballet dancers are believed to starve. On visiting the Academy's dining room, you realize that those rumors are false. There's a lot of delicious food here. In fact, a dancer's nutrition should be balanced. Classes, rehearsals and performances require strength and energy. Facing these inhuman loads is simply impossible without a decent meal. But keeping fit is a must. Номер двенадцатый. Эльвина Ибраимова. Номер тринадцатый. Артур Мкрчан. Московская государственная академия хореографии. The victories of the Academy students in the most prestigious Russian and international competitions serve as the best testimony to the unsurpassed level of training. Over the past decade alone, more than 130 young artists have been awarded prizes and diplomas. Our children participate in such contests as the International Ballet Competition, with the jury presided over by Yuri Grigorovich and the Young Ballet of the World held in Sochi, inspired by Svetlana Medvedeva. A new competition, Russian Ballet, was established this year. Moscow hosted all Russia's ballet schools. The competition was held at the Bolshoi Theatre, and our children participated as well, to become the best. Academy student Maria Teresa Beck, an American, was preparing for the competition and for the final state exams at the same time. She openly admits that many come from the USA to study at the Moscow Academy, and some don't hurry to return back home, and they stay for work. Actually, I was born in America, and my mother is an opera singer. She was born in Latvia and moved to America. When asked why I wasn't working in the USA, I'd always say Russia has a completely different culture in ballet, a different attitude to it. For Mary Beck, studying is a matter of the past. But Lisa Kokoreva and Nastya Didikina are only at the beginning. The Academy made the girls best friends. Lisa was born in Moscow, and her father's a ballet dancer. Nastya is from Tula. Before joining the Academy, she would travel from Tula to Moscow three times a week for training courses, doing her utmost to study here. I don't exactly know how to explain why I chose ballet. I think that my heart was just sparked by the very art. Leaving their parents for another city at the age of 10, to abandon fun and in fact childhood, choosing a daily toil instead, this was a mature step, worthy of deep respect. At first, of course, I missed my parents, but then the girls calmed me down. I knew exactly that I wanted to be a ballerina, and I was heading for my goal. Today is a remarkable day for the girls. A few years ago, 
the Academy adopted a tradition. Sophomores write letters to themselves, to be read only at the final course. Thoughts, observations and wishes can be found in the letters. All the messages are stored under lock and key, and access to them is denied. The first letters will be given back to their authors in 2014. A letter to the future, the year 2019. Well, I wrote about some girls to encourage them. I wrote about Nastya Didikina. She's so homesick and she's training very hard. I wrote to my friend Lisa, wishing that our fates become one. I wished that the courses of our life should meet one day. Everyday life within the Academy is a bright page in its history. The Academy cherishes, collects, preserves and examines its history with the utmost attention. The Academy has been carrying fundamental scientific research on the history of the Moscow Ballet School for several years now. It has already released several papers and monographs, and the Academy is going to issue a fundamental work based on a range of archive materials. The treatise reflects the period of the Moscow Ballet School from 1773 to 1917. In addition, the Academy's presidency is constantly improving living and learning conditions for the children. The government's decision to erect another building marked a milestone in Russian ballet. A huge building project is on the way. Under the governmental decision, the near future will bring us a hostel and a new building. Apart from that, we need a large conference room and graduates will need two spacious extra halls, similar to our stage. Children experiencing such enormous physical strain also need a recreational center. I wish we had a swimming pool. Throughout its history, the Academy has been part of Russian destiny, sharing its successes and providing support in turbulent times. In autumn of the year 2013, the entire country felt for the victims of severe flooding in the Far East. The Academy's students made their own contribution by staging a charity concert. Moscow, the Bolshoi Theatre. This is by no means an ordinary show. Today's is a memorable celebration. These young men and women on stage have been looking forward to it for eight long years of hard work. They are the only ones to have their farewell bell on Russia's main stage. Foreseeing the path of their creative careers is difficult. But the Academy did set high standards from the very start. 240 years of history is a springboard for world stars. This Academy is meant for genuine talent. To my mind, once on the stage, experiencing the joy of performance, success and spectators' gratitude, to receive applause and flowers from fans, you'll be ready to abandon a lot in life for the sake of these benefits.